everyone. Welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving an interesting function. This is from, uh, from one of the Olympiads. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a really nice problem. We have the absolute value of z squared minus 1 equals the absolute value of z squared plus 1. Remember, z is a complex number. I'll be presenting three methods, even though the third method, I might just keep it a little short, depending on how much time we have left. Okay, ready? First method. I'm going to go ahead and use an identity. What is the absolute value of z squared? Remember, when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you get a squared plus b squared if z is equal to a plus bi. But this is the same thing as what? The square root of a squared plus b squared squared, which is the absolute value of z squared. So we kind of get this nice identity. If you multiply z and z bar, you get the absolute value of z squared, which means we can replace the absolute value of z squared with that. Make sense? Let's go ahead and do it. The absolute value of z squared minus 1 equals z times z bar, which is the absolute value of z squared plus 1. Right? That's the equation we have. But guess what? We want to square both sides. Why? Because we have an absolute value on the left-hand side, and I want to take advantage of the same identity one more time, and squaring both sides, hopefully, is not a very bad thing, is it? Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Square this and square that. Now, when you square z squared minus 1, obviously, it, the absolute value of z squared minus 1, it is equivalent to the product of z squared minus 1 and its conjugate. But the conjugate of z squared minus 1 is going to be z bar squared minus 1. F try to find out why that's the case. So from here, we're going to get the following. z squared minus 1 times its conjugate, which can be written as z bar squared minus 1, which is a great improvement, obviously, equals z times z bar plus 1 squared. So that's our equation. Let's go ahead and distribute everything on the left-hand side, and things are going to simplify like crazy. Let's do it. Okay. Distribute z squared, z bar squared, and then minus z squared minus z bar squared plus 1 equals, and on the right-hand side, we have a perfect square, and that's just perfect, z squared, z bar squared, plus 2z z bar plus 1. Awesome. Now take a look. This product is going to cancel out. 1 is going to cancel out. What do we end up with? Some minus signs with squares and a plus sign. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. We're going to get z squared plus 2z z bar plus z bar squared. And keep that in the middle. Hopefully you can see that this is equal to 0 because everything canceled out pretty much. And what that means is this is a perfect square, and that's perfect again, right? Isn't this z plus z bar quantity squared? Yes? Okay, so that's equal to zero. But that just means that z plus z bar, because think about the complex world. Only a zero squared can be zero. That has a single solution, right? That's awesome. So this has to be zero, which means if z is a plus bi, and this is a minus b, I think about it, their imaginary parts have to cancel out. In other words, the real parts are going to be zero, because imaginary already canceled out, we ended up with the real parts, and their sum is zero, so the real part of z must be zero from me. You can also write the z plus z bar as two times the real part of z, but that implies the real part of z equals zero, doesn't it? So this means one of two things. Either z is zero, which is like zero, the number zero, or z is imaginary, like i, or two i, or a million i, right? Doesn't have a real part, too bad. Great, so z can be anything that satisfies one of these, make sense? We're not finding a particular solution, we're finding so many solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Like I said, uh, the third method might be a little brief, but you're going to finish it up, right? For my second method, I'm going to use the name of this channel. What's this channel called? 
A plus B I, right? Hopefully you remember that and spread the word, please. Z equals A plus B I. So let's go ahead and replace Z with that. So I'm going to get the absolute value of A plus B I squared minus 1. This is Z squared minus 1. And that is equal to the absolute value of A plus B I squared plus 1. Minus 1 turns into plus 1. How interesting, right? Great. With the absolute value, everything is possible. Now, if you square this, you're going to get A squared minus B squared plus 2ABI. But let's go ahead and bring the one over here so we can write the real and imaginary part separately. And this is just going to be A squared plus B squared because that's the Z times Z bar. Remember with the first method? Right. So now, how do you find the absolute value of this number? Real part squared, imaginary part squared, add them up, square root it and you'll get the idea. But let's do this. Square both sides, because that way you're just going to be adding the sum of two squares, which is nice, right? We don't have to deal with square roots, radicals. And then we're going to get this nice expression. Obviously, one can turn this into a sum of, I mean, a difference of two squares, but that's not necessary. Let's just expand everything. That's fun, right? a to the fourth, b to the fourth, plus 1, minus 2a squared, b squared, minus 2a squared, minus 2b squared. Actually, that's supposed to be a plus because we're multiplying these and doubling. That's the first part. Plus 4a squared, b squared. It's not going to fit, so I'm going to have to use the second line. And this guy over here is going to be a to the fourth, plus b to the fourth, plus 1, plus 2a squared, b squared. Everything is positive. Plus 2a squared, plus 2b squared, plus... Nothing. That's it. There should be six terms. Okay, I'm done. Now, we're going to do the following. Cancel, 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 cancel. Cancel, cancel, and more cancel, and more cancel. Now, notice that 4a squared b squared minus 2a squared b squared is equal to 2a squared b squared. Cancel, 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 and then no more cancel, but put everything... Uh-oh, wait a minute. We have more to cancel, and we ended up with negative 2a squared equals 2a squared. Now, don't do anything funny at this point. Don't cancel out the a squared because that's going to give you, yay, negative 2 equals 2. I just proved it. You see how easy those proofs are? But that's not right, of course, because you can't do that. You can't divide by a squared because guess what? a is equal to 0. Don't tell anyone. Okay. So from here, we get negative 4a squared equals 0, which means a squared equals 0, which means a is equal to 0. And that just means the real part of z, which means you can get a zero or imaginary. Because how can you get zero if the real part is zero only? Well, the imaginary part can also be zero, right? Makes sense? And obviously zero is not imaginary because it's zero i, too bad. And here's the third method and we'll finish with that, okay? For my third method, I'm going to use something that is also valid for real numbers, which is called, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, triangle inequality. So. If you find the absolute value of two complex numbers, add them up, or if you add the numbers up first and find the absolute value, the results can be different. And obviously, if you add them, if, uh, add them up first, you might get a smaller answer. When are they equal? In certain cases, they are when they are kind of multiples of each other, so on and so forth. Anyways, when they're both positive and negative, it's reals. So let's go ahead and use this strategy uh, let's apply it to the situation. The absolute value of z squared minus 1, obviously I can write it as the absolute value of z squared plus negative 1 because I do need a sum, right? And then this is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of z squared plus the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1 because, come on, you know that, right? It's 1. Now, here's what we got. The absolute value of z squared minus 1 is less than or equal to the absolute value of z squared, but that could be written as follows because that's... That works, right? So we do need an equation, an inequality, not an inequality. When is the inequality, when does the inequality turn into an equality? When z squared is a negative real number. In other words, if z is imaginary or if its real part is zero. Again, we get to the same point, right? But the proof is left to the reader. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.